both in the US and here in terms of there's there's very specific data protection legislation. So if you wanted to find out who somebody was, um, if you ran the website, like for example, politics.ie, if you wanted to find out who an anonymous poster would be, uh, if I was to tell you, I'd actually break in the law, the Data Protection Act. But if you were to get a subpoena from a court or get a judge or get me into court and basically say as part of a, an investigation we need to establish who this person is, then I would have to Then you would be forced is, to, to reveal it. But it, is, it does seem to be a very unfair playing ground, David, at the moment, that anybody can go on. They can have complete anonymity if they subscribe to politics.ie and they write sometimes libelous postings and very libelous comments about people. Mm -hmm. that's, do you not think that that's terribly unfair? They don't, uh, they don't have to adhere to the same very rigorous rules and regulations that we have where we're frightfully careful about what we say about people in the general media in case we libel them. It's not to say it doesn't happen, but we're very aware of it. Sure. Well, I would say I can only speak in this regard with regards to politics today and other cases that I'm, that I'm aware of in the, in the Irish blogging community. Any time a post goes up on, on politics today that is any way questionable or, or contentious, uh, one of the 15 moderators that, that I have on, on the website would, would remove it. I've been regularly contacted by people who have pointed out that the content has been written about them online that they have an issue with. I've never been dragged into court over a libel case. And I think any you know, person who posts under their own name is, is more responsible. I think that there is a, a certain level of, an, as you say, an, an uneven playing field because there are some people who think that because they are anonymous, oh, absolutely. they are more yes. free to make you know, comment and, and you know, as I said, make libelous. But why you know, don't remarks. you? Why the anonymity? Why don't you, at the very least, with politics.ie, have a system where somebody has to give their real name? If I put in a system to require people to establish who they actually were. You would, you would kill internet discussion. Over why? Years. But you see, why would because you? Because it, it is impossible to remove the, the issue of anonymity online. It's very easy to go to, I mean, for example, you read out a comment there from, from a person. That may not have been that person's name. Yes, but they text yeah. in a comment. Now, fine, the comment wasn't uh, libelous. Uh, but still, people can text into this uh, show anonymously. And yeah, but we wouldn't be reading still, it. Yeah, but we wouldn't have right libelous comments no, here. Yes. Absolutely. Because, like, you can have comments rate made by people in politics.ie, boards.ie, that are very nasty and libelous about people. Okay. Well, I'd say, first of all, about libel. Um, and I'd say boards that I and myself and many other bloggers uh, and, and discussion board owners in Ireland will be very aware of the, of the legislation because they've had to, to make sure that they, that they know it. Um, there is, when you are trying to prove libel, if you're in a court law and you're trying to prove libel, you have to prove that your name has been damaged um, as a reputation, result of all that the, sort of yeah, stuff, of, of yes. Reputation. Yeah. And you have to demonstrate that a person who is anonymous online is actually making damaging comments. I think on the flip side of, of anonymity, I mean, you know, there are 18,000 people who, who would view politics today in any given day, a couple of hundred people who would actually actively um, engage in the site. There are many hundreds of them who post anonymously, don't post libelous comments, but post anonymously. And they will be people that are politicians, that are ministers, that are journalists that um, will engage on the website. And even that level, if you were to remove the issue of, of, of anonymity there, you would absolutely remove the ability of those people to actually... Uh, but there is a out. level of dishonesty there at the same time, though. Isn't it? And I take your point that, you know, you'd have far less people blogging then if they had to actually give their real names. But there's something cowardly at the same time, isn't there, about, you know, writing a comments under a pseudonym or complete anonymity and, and saying something that may be very hurtful or inaccurate, just expressing your views and letting it all out, compared with... How how much more responsible you might be if you had to attach your name to your comment. I do think that the, the internet needs to be treated by people in a responsible manner. And there are times whereby, even on my own side, if there are people who don't treat the medium in a responsible manner and think it is an opportunity for them to say whatever they like, they do get removed. Um, now, it's almost impossible to you know, prevent them from coming back again under another name. But there is no ideal solution uh, uh, to this, uh, Karen, because... It's you know it's a, it's a obviously it's a new communications channel, um, and it's just it's just important for the people that actually control the mediums, i.e. The, the, yeah. the, the administrators and the moderators, to to police it and to make sure that if comments go up that are questionable and have issue, that they get removed swiftly. Um, we also are joined on the line by Philip McCarthy, head of Bebo, the social online site in Ireland. Good morning to you, Philip. Good morning. What do you have to say about this whole issue about, you know, the blogging and, and the lack, we'll say, of the kinds of rules that you may have in the regular uh, media field? Well, it's, 
you know, it's a strange issue, and I think sometimes we uh, we have to sort of remind ourselves that this medium is in its embryonic beginnings. You know, we're we're only just starting to figure figure this medium out. And you were talking about anonymity there, and you know, it the the anonymity question. I, I agree that there should be, you know. People should be allowed to comment uh, anonymously because essentially you're starting debate uh, on these blogs, and um, you know that's a good thing about it. In traditional broadcast media, and uh, certainly in print, it's very hard for someone who's on the end of allegations, or whatever, to reply. Yes, uh, and to comment back. So that you know, there's there's pros and cons to it. But I think because we're at the beginning of this, uh, uh, the growth of this medium, I think we'll see anonymity becoming less and less plausible and less and less possible. I mean, we all have a digital trail, we all have a digital identity, and I think that it's going to become more and more difficult to make libelous comments without your name being attached at some point. But I want yeah. to read out a comment that has come in, Philip, and I'll also go to you, David. Mm-hmm. Very interesting from one of our listeners who says there are vicious remarks about me on Rate My Teacher, that I'm ugly, fat, can't do my job. This greatly distresses me. Is there nothing I can do to remove them? Now, there's a classic case of somebody who feels that if not that they're being liable, though that sounds to me like they are being liable, but that certainly there are very nasty things being written about them on this online site. Well, we, I mean, we, we've seen this before um, with Bebo, with uh, online bullying of students and indeed of teachers as well um, um, from some of our users. And some of the larger sites like Bebo would have, um, you know, complaints processes and, um, you know, ways of moderating this sort of stuff. Some of the smaller sites, some of the smaller blogging sites don't have these things. So, and, you know, the only thing you can do is email the site and have it taken down. And, um, you know, that, that's all you can do. Unfortunately, this is the problem with freedom of speech. Sometimes you're going to hear and see things that you don't want to hear and see about yourself. Okay. David Cochran, head of politics.ie, just before we go there, just your views on, on well, that particular I, texter's comments. Well, what I'd say, first of all, is that we don't actually have a culture um, in, in Ireland uh, for freedom of speech. That's, that's not provided for in legislation. Uh, where to be provided for in legislation, that might be something that, that many people uh, would applaud. Um, if, I mean, if, if somebody makes a, a comment on, on a website, um, it, it, is, it, it is actually quite simple in a technical manner to find out who they are. A person who would use politics.ie, for example, or use Bebo, when they post a comment, they leave behind a marker which is basically says the computer that they're posting from. Yes. And then you can say, right, well, that person was actually they using Daircom, for example. Yes. Contact Daircom and say, at this time, this person made this particular comment. Uh, I need to find out who their identity is. Now, the thing is, is that if you need to do that, you have to go to a court of law. Yeah. Or, as the Data Protection Act would provide for, if it's a criminal investigation, then a sergeant or higher in the Gardaí could make but an inquiry. Have you had people who have emailed you and said, you said something very, not you personally, but on your website, something very hurtful and libelous has been said of me, I want you to remove it? Um, every week. And do you remove the comments? Uh, most of the time, yes. Do they get removed, erased from the entire system? Um, there are, because there, there, are, are, there are sometimes you can Google a person's name yeah. and you get all the nasty libelous stuff that comes from boards.ie or politics.ie that can stay in the system. Okay. What I'd say there is is that um, under Irish law, people who run things like websites are um, only, only responsible for the actual websites themselves. If I go in and remove something from my website, if Google still holds a cache of it, um, I'm not responsible for that. Where is politics.ie hosted, by the way? Politics.ie is hosted in the United States. Why are you hosting it in the US? I'm hosting it in the US, and it's actually owned by a US company that I formed in the US. For a specific reason that um, in a lot of the times where uh, people contact politics.ie to complain about something being posted on the website, uh, they threaten legal action, they threaten X, Y, and Z. Uh, under the US law, under the um, Communications Decency Act, the c- people that actually own the websites... Uh, aren't legally uh, held liable for uh, what is actually posted on them.